How's it going? Davis James here at the Golden Fly Tying Desk. Today we are going to tie a Game Changer. Uh, Game Changer is designed by Blaine Chocolate. Uh, it's a great fly that really has a lot of realistic movement, even in slower moving water. Uh, it's a, really used to target any number of species from pike and muskie to trout and bass, kind of everything in between. And today we're going to work on the Feather Game Changer. So uh, I've got a hen cape here. I've already pre-selected the feathers here, uh, descending from narrowest, which will be towards the tail end of the fly, to fattest, which will be used in the uh, kind of head and shoulders of the fly. Uh, I've got a pheasant rump here. Uh, I'm gonna use these right here for uh, the tail. Uh, and I've got even a little piece of jungle cock. I'm gonna select a couple eyeballs from this um, just to give the fly a little peel towards the front there. Uh, tying this on a A-Rex TP610 trout predator hook. Uh, and then I am using 25, 20, 15, 10 millimeter shanks along with the uh, little tail section here. So uh, let's get to it. One thing about this fly is that the components to it, sort of the chassis, um, you know, is is uh, they're kind of difficult to, to secure in the vise uh, and leaving and leave enough room to tie materials on. So um, I'm using a Renzetti vise here. Renzetti's have a nice tapered jaw that really allows for a lot of access to these smaller little chunks uh, or smaller little uh, shanks here. So this little shank is specifically designed for just the tail. Uh, just for holding on to the tail. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start some thread wraps. I'm using right now the six uh Nano Silk from Semperfly. It is a really strong thread that uh, doesn't build up very quickly, so it's perfect for uh, this type of an application. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take the stem of the feather, I'm gonna go ahead and strip a lot of this stuff off. Um, we're not gonna need it. I'm gonna make a little pile. Actually, that soft stuff from the back end of the feather makes a really good uh, little dubbing. Um, you know, if you're dubbing up a bugger, or a balance leech or something like that. And then what I've done is I'm kind of marrying these two feathers together like so. And we're gonna tie them with their curve going out. And I'm gonna tie first the feathers on your side. You're gonna use the pair of hemos here to mush the actual stem of the feather. It's gonna make it tie in on uh, the side of the shank a little more predictably. So two at a time, do one wrap, bring over another wrap, kind of tug on the feather to get it the length I want. I want the whole feather. So then I'm gonna take the other two feathers and do the same thing. I'm gonna strip off the soft under fur. Putting it aside because this stuff in a dubbing loop can be pretty badass. Uh, do the same thing with the other feather. Strip off all the soft stuff. Take the two feathers, marry them together. Uh, now that they're married together, and if you hear people talking in the background, we're, uh, we're at the shop and then we are open and live. So I'm mushing the stem of the feather. I'll line that up with the other two feathers. Two wraps, that allows me to mess around and really ensure that these are on the side of that tail shank. Um, that's just going to really help kind of the fly track. Okay, I've done mostly loose wraps. I've made sure that the stems are on the side. Once I have them where I want them, I'm going to pull the thread. I'm going to make a wrap and pull the thread towards me. That should prevent majority of the feathers from, you know, should keep them from rolling. I'm going to take some thin hard resin. I'm just going to go ahead and give a nice coat of resin on it. And you've probably figured out this fly is pretty time consuming. Um, that is normal. 
take our next shank. We're going to attach it to our tail shank. Pop it out of the vise. And this is really why this vise is handy because you can see you really only have the bottom of that bump from that shank to secure the section of fly. So you really want to have a good bite. All right. Now what I'm going to be doing when I lay this thread base down on the second one is I'm going to be kind of pulling and closing as I do this jam knot. And by closing up that gap, it's going to prevent this uh, tail from fouling as much. If you leave that just wide open, the tail can foul. All right, now, so I'm up at the front. Now what we're going to be doing is uh, I've got this. This is one inch Frenzy fly brush, uh, and I've actually trimmed it. I've tapered it with my scissors to be a little more three quarter because we're going to really want to focus on that taper the whole way through as we tie this fly. So I'm going to strip off a couple of the fibers from the wire so I get a good bite and tie this wire in. to cut this out as close as I can without cutting my thread. Uh, but I like the, using those loppers. <clears throat> okay, so the trick is you really wanna be sure you're leaving room uh, because we're gonna grab our first feather here from our hen saddle. We're going to strip the fibers backwards to reveal the stem. You're gonna create a V here, okay? This is our tie-in point right there. Uh, so similar to other flies, I want that uh, kind of curve naturally going back. I'm going to put put this at a 45 degree angle on my side of the hook, uh, and I'm going to do a one wrap to capture it. A second wrap to make sure it's in the right place, make sure it's, I like where it's at. I can make a little adjustment here if I need. And now I can peel that stem back and do thread wraps down on top of that stem folded back. This will ensure that that thing is tied in really well. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the feather and I'm going to spin it like I would a soft tackle. And pry the fibers back as we go. So trying to keep that curvature going this direction. So a few of them kind of twisted on me, so I'm gonna preen them back. Do two wraps. There's, there's the second full wrap, and that's about all, all we have room for. So I'm going to go ahead and capture this over the stem of the feather two times. I'm going to pull the feather back, preen everything back, and I'm going to wrap on top of that stem again. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to run down the cool of the feather and then snip. That can really be helpful. Okay. So we're happy with it. Put a little UV glue just right on top of that thread. Whip finish. Yeah, if you're hearing the door open, you're hearing a little noise, we are at the shop and we are open right now. All right, the third shank. Start my jam knot and be sure to capture both sides of the shank. So you kind of find out you're going to go through a lot of the hen saddle feathers when you do these. So um, I'm just using a basic kind of uh, wopsy hen cape. All 
All right, I'm moving on now to the 20 millimeter shank here, about halfway done. This is definitely the type of fly you're gonna wanna tie on with uh, zero or one X material. Now you see we still have room on the shank here and I'm gonna put another feather. I'd rather use feathers instead of the flash uh, to fill the fly out just cause they're gonna cut through the water a little better. One more shank and then we're going to the hook. This one right here is the 25. So we're really focusing on tapering our bug as we go. Um, if you were to use a long shank and a bunch of short ones, the fly would be you know, a little unstable. Tie in, tie forward, pull the feather back, kind of broke at that moment, make sure we're tied in really well, create a little bit of a thread head near the eye, so the next feather goes on nice and smooth, and wrap. All right, so on to the next feather. I'll take a couple of the high spots off this real quick. That way I can kind of visualize the taper coming together. All right, so we left room. We got one more one more feather to apply. Um, again, checking the taper. That one's a little thin. That one's also a little thin. So I'm gonna bump up to the next size. There we go. All right, so now we're moving on from, as we bulk up and, and, uh, and move towards the front of the fly, we're gonna go ahead and attach this all to a hook and build the front head of the fly. So we're gonna throw thread wraps on the shank here, moving all the way back to about the hook point. tag end. Uh, now this is an additional, I believe this one's a 15 millimeter shank. Um, I'm going to actually tie this in. So skip to right where it lines up. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to tie this in where that sort of uh, contour meets the contour of the shank of the hook, just like that. And tie it on super tight. Don't worry about the eye of the hook. You're just going to wrap over it does have a little bump in there, but that's not that big of a deal. But before you close, you're gonna to wanna to attach the rest of the fly. Now to wrap things up, we're gonna throw a pair of eyes on here. We're gonna use a little bit of jungle cock that I have laying around. Uh, super lucky to know a couple dudes who gave some to me a while back. Uh, I think they're the appropriate eye for a fly that takes this long to tie.
All right, there you are. That is the Feather Game Changer. Uh, this is gonna be a really addicting fly to fish if you never fished it. Uh, insane movement. It's a uh, addicting fly to get to tying and even more fun to fish. So I uh, appreciate you watching. Uh, if you have any questions or would like to tie this fly, come on into the shop. Uh, we're gonna have uh, all the materials to tie it, a bunch of different colors and uh, other variations as well. So appreciate it. Thanks for watching.